And in this particular video, we are talking about quadratic equations. And the uh, question is, we want to write an equation for this situation. So we have a uh, parabola that's facing downward, and it is bouncing off the x-axis at 4. Okay, so again, we have a parabola. It's an upside-down parabola, or a parabola that is facing downward, and it is bouncing off the x-axis at 4. So what we want to do here is write an equation for this situation. So this is actually enough information for you to write an equation. And actually, there are different equations uh, that could fit this scenario, okay? Because here is a parabola that bounces at 4. Here is another parabola that bounces at 4. And I can uh, uh, have infinite many uh, different parabolas that bounce at this particular point. So, you know, there isn't any one specific answer here. But uh, hopefully most of you out there that are, let's say, in Algebra 1, Algebra 2, you can be like, oh, I kind of can construct a nice, easy equation to express uh, this quadratic function or this quadratic equation. So that is the question. And if you can answer it, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you uh, one correct answer, the easiest correct answer. And, of course, we're going to be talking about some of the concepts involved here. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so again, uh, there's not any one uh, answer here, but the easiest answer to get in this uh, particular scenario, if you're like, oh, okay, I know what to do here, well, uh, hopefully would be this, okay, i.e., uh, these would be two answers, and they are equivalent. If you gave me this equation right here, y is equal to negative x minus 4 times x minus 4, and if you expanded this, i.e., did this multiplication, you would get this equation here. I, myself, as a math teacher, would accept both of these as correct, okay? Now, again, there are other type of equations you could uh, find to fit this scenario, but to do that, that would actually involve, you know, it would be, um, I don't want to say too much more work, but you would have to do this and then do some additional things. But anyways, if you got this problem right, let's go ahead and give yourself a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family that you conquered a nice quadratic functions problem today. They'll be very impressed to uh, know that information. Okay, so let's talk about what's going on here. Well, what's going on here is something called a double root, right? So there's different types of roots when we're dealing with uh, polynomial functions, i.e., and we're kind of uh, keeping this only to quadratic equations, quadratic functions. Right, because uh, this is stuff that you study you know, big time in Algebra 1. Right? You kind of start studying it in pre-algebra, but by the time you get into Algebra 2 or college algebra, you should know a ton about solving quadratic functions and quadratic equations. So here's a couple basic uh, things that you should know. All right, so if we have, uh, first of all, the graph of a quadratic function, function, okay, and what is a quadratic equation? Well, it's a second-degree polynomial, right? So in other words, it's a polynomial where the highest power is to 2. So things like this, 3x squared minus x is equal to 0. This would be an example of a uh, quadratic equation. And again, the graph of a quadratic function or a quadratic equation is some sort of parabola, some sort of U-shaped thing like this, okay? Now, the way... Your, uh, the parabola, okay, uh, travels on, or uh, is, um, when you graph that parabola on the xy axis, that tells you a lot about the roots, or the zeros, or this type of solutions you're dealing with. So, let's just kind of look at uh, this real quick and real uh, generally uh, here. So, let's suppose I have a quadratic equation, and its graph look like this. Now, I'm not, I'm not even interested in having or showing you the exact, um, quadratic function. It's not really important for what I'm trying to do here, but let's suppose this parabola was crossing here at negative 5 and at positive 1. Well, that means that these two points here are the real solutions to that quadratic equation. So when you're dealing with quadratic equations, you will always have two solutions, always, always, always two solutions. So you'll either have two real number solutions 
or you can have two imaginary or complex number of solutions. Now, the point of intersection on the x-axis is the location of real number solutions, okay? So you can have a parabola like this, you can have another one that goes, let's say, like that. So these points of intersections on the x-axis would be the real number solutions. But uh, what happens if you have a parabola, let me go there, uh, i.e. the graph of a quadratic equation, and it looks like this, okay? So maybe something like so. Well, here, in this case, you have this parabola, and it's not crossing the x-axis. So because it's not crossing the x-axis, there are no real solutions, right? And hopefully you're, you're kind of like um, understanding everything I'm talking about, because if you're studying quadratic equations, quadratic functions, this should be stuff, you, this should be concepts that you're, you know, really familiar with. It's very, very important. If you need additional help with this stuff, check out either my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course, all depending upon what level you're at. But uh, anyways, here, if you graphed a uh, quadratic equation and, it and its graph looked like this, well, if you went to solve it, you would not have any real number solutions. You would have two imaginary or complex number solutions, okay? All right, so I say all of that to say the following. What about this scenario that we're dealing with? Well, if we have a parabola that's bouncing off the x-axis, it's just touching at that one point right there, this point here, it's just bouncing right off right off at four. Well, what kind of scenario is this? This is what we call a double root, okay? So there is two solutions, and you're like, well, you know, it's not, I don't see two unique, uh, two different uh, x points that the graph is um, crossing uh, the x-axis. Well, it's the, this four right here uh, constitutes two unique solutions, okay? So one solution is at four, and the other is at four, and again, we would call this a double root, all right? So you really need to know the different types of roots and even how to, to determine them using something called the discriminant, which is a part of the quadratic uh, formula. So I really have to kind of rein myself in because I just love talking about all this stuff because there's so many different connections you can make between graphs, quadratic equations, quadratic formula. This is really, really big, important stuff. Okay, so what we're dealing with here is what we call a double root. And, uh, of course, this graph is uh, pointing, it's a downward type of graph, and we need to know uh, something about uh, what causes a, a parabola to be downward and not upward. I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. So let's just go ahead and construct an equation, okay, uh, that would uh, represent having a double root at positive 4. Well, the easiest way to do that is to have uh, the linear factors x minus 4 and x minus 4, okay? Because if you were to set each one of these equal to 0, okay, let's say uh, solve this equation, you set it equal to 0 right here, well, you can just use the zero product property, set each one of these linear factors equal to 0, and guess what you're going to solve? Uh, solve for x, you're going to have x minus 4 is equal to 0, so you're going to solve for x is equal to 4 two times. You're going to have these two unique solutions, x, x, uh, x is equal to 4 and x is equal to 4. So this right here is um, uh, excellent. Okay, this is our two linear factors, and it would describe a double root at 4. However, uh, that equation there, its graph actually looks like this. It's an upward parabola, okay? So how do I know that? Well, if I was to multiply this together, x minus 4 times x minus 4, I go x times x, I'm going to get a positive x squared, okay? So here's the deal. When you have a positive coefficient for your x squared, i.e. your x squared is positive, it doesn't, I don't really care what number is in front of there. It could be a 5, it could be a 10, it could be a 1 half. If the um, sign is positive, well, then the parabola, okay, the graph is going to have a uh, upward parabola like so. It's basically a happy parabola. It is happy to be a parabola, so it's very positive. Uh, you know, it's kind of one little simple way to think about it. Now, likewise, if you have a negative x squared, well, this uh, quadratic function is very sad to be a parabola. So we need to get a negative sign in front of a quadratic equation that still has a double root at 4, 
Okay, so that's what we need to do here. So this x minus 4 times x minus 4 would be excellent if the graph was like so. So how can we fix that up? Well, this is very easy. We just put a negative sign in front of uh, these two linear factors. So negative x minus 4 times x minus 4 is equal to 0. And that basically fixes that up. So now we basically flip the parabola upside down. And what I could do here is simply go ahead and um, expand this. I could take these two linear factors, multiply these together. So this would be uh, x squared minus 4x minus 4x. This would be um, minus 8x plus 16. Then take that negative sign right here and multiply in. So you would end up with a negative x squared plus 8x minus 16. Okay, so if you were to graph this, you would have that upside down parabola that bounces at four. All right, so it's very important that you know how to construct uh, equations given graphs. I mean, this is an exercise, really, your uh, kind of total knowledge of quadratic functions, quadratic equations, the graphs, the type of roots. This is very, very important because. What we're dealing with here is what we call a degree two polynomial. Okay, we're dealing with polynomials. Polynomials are a huge, huge topic in algebra. We love polynomials, and um, as you continue to study uh, more advanced algebra, you'll learn more and more uh, about polynomials. Okay, so again, we're dealing with degree two polynomials. You got to master uh, degree two polynomials uh, before you take on degree three, degree four, degree five, which require more advanced algebra. And uh, if some of you out there are studying that type of um, algebra, we're using things like the rational root theorem. Uh, uh, you know, there's other types of theorems and other types of tools, synthetic division and stuff like that. I do teach that in my Algebra 2 course, or you might be interested in my pre-calculus course as well. So it all depends on what level of math you're in. But uh, anyways, if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.